So thank you, um, thank you, thank you, Lily. <laughs> um, we are gonna start uh, our session today just to give you a framework of, of a few ideas that we are gonna be followed throughout the activities of the day today. Uh, Lily and I are working on uh, reviewing literature and incorporating findings from our research on interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary um, research proposal evaluation criteria. So we're gonna share with you some of the things that we have found um, through literature review, but also through connecting with agencies and looking at what are they uh, looking for in terms of criteria for assessment on ID and TD work. So these, uh, we prepared this, oh, perfect. Magia. Um, so we, you will receive, so we, oh, sorry, first we left some handouts. Those, for, those are for you. I think that's a good um, resource for you later, not only in the seminar, but beyond the seminar. The overarching, sorry, no, we, so this is the handout, and you will be receiving feedback from your mentors on a template that Lily and I worked on that it will be looking at how you are articulating the ID and TD approaches in your own proposals. That template you will receive by the, the mentor with our feedback, but we are gonna share with you some of the criteria that you will find in th that those templates when you receive them. So as I was telling you, we are looking at evaluation criteria that we have in order to see how we actually work on an interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary project. How do we write what we are doing in that particular component of your research? So we have one overarching evaluation question. Um, well, it's actually a topic that has three aspects. Does the research proposal successfully and effectively, one, integrate its disciplinary components so it generates an emergent whole? The second one is address an interdisciplinary research question or program of questions. And three, produce outcomes that are demonstrably great, greater than the sum of its disciplinary parts. So this is something, this is informing the whole proposal. So it's a through line that we only, we not only see as when you start your project, but rather it goes throughout the proposal. So it has to be reflected in the way you present the problem, in the way you frame methodologies, analytical approaches that you will be using, and in the way you present your outcomes. How are they gonna be look, how are they looked, how would they look like? Um, so we have some components of integration, and we did added this slide, these slides because in the seminar we are doing a lot of hands-on hands -on activities, we are talking about our experiences, we have um, anecdotal experiences of effective collaboration. Um, Lily and I are working since 2014, we have a few grants already as a product of our collaboration, so that is really good, it's, it's um, you have, uh, expertise here of people who are telling their experience about interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary work. But this is informed by research. So beyond our experiences, there is a field of science, the science of team science, and long ago informed by approaches to collaboration, group work in education and in social sciences. So we want to show this to you so you know that this is something that people are looking at. We are not good at collaborating, and we are having increasingly research that has to be done in collaboration, and we, we all know, know that. So the components of integration, the first one is the cogeneration of research questions and project design, and we're gonna be giving you those guiding questions. Lily's gonna talk about those. And we have a reference there of what does it, how do you go about doing this um, co-generation of research questions. How do you pose a question in collaboration with other disciplines? The compatibility of epistemologies, and this is, this is very important, so you know those that are in academia, and, and I think this applies for all, all other sectors, the way we see the world explains the way we study it, right? So it's 
going to be completely different, and we're going to talk about that later in the exercises today. So how would I go about asking a question if I see the world as very complex, very complex system, not compartmentalized, versus my worldview is like, yeah, there is a truth out there. There is, the, there is one way of explaining this based on my discipline. So this is important. How do you share those? And you have to have those conversations with your team members. Mutual learning and language acquisition. So there is a process. This, this goes, as I was telling you, throughout the proposal development. How do we learn together? How do we create spaces for talking about how we see the world, what questions are important, what question I see, questions I see relevant for addressing this problem? Um, high level responsibilities for managing and nurturing internal communication. So specifically here, talking about leadership, how do you create those spaces and what are the skills and personality traits, behaviors that a leader can foster? We, Lily and I, found that um, there is no one leadership style that you have and like that's your leadership style, you have a way to developing skills too coordinate the project. Um, development of interdisciplinary skills, connected with what I just said, shared methodologies and interpretation. We're going to talk about this again, like finding ways to translate how we understand analyzing data, or how do we talk about these um, languages that we use, which are based on our approach or our disciplinary view. Um, the creation of common ground. So shared vocabularies and combination of research results at high levels. So what are the outputs of uh, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research? Um, oh, okay, and, and before we forget, so as I was telling you, this is informed by research, so we have a, some so citation and references for you, but we also um, reviewed some of the NIH, CDF, NSF, NASA, and LIRA, which is, I think, one of that integrates very, very clearly and pays attention to how do we, how do we do write proposals, no, how do they assess proposals that have this integrative approach. So, so what we want to say here, and we want to be emphatic, is that uh, we see two layers of your work. The disciplinary, like the rigor on your disciplinary component, so you're working with water, you want to be very good at your literature view and your project plan for disciplinary component, the topic that you're addressing, but there is another layer, which is this one, and there is science out there. So you need citations for that, you need to show that you know what you're doing in terms of TD and ID work. Creo que ya, verdad? Yep. Okay, bueno. Um, sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so also that criteria there is just showing that agencies are, this is really difficult for agencies as they review uh, these kinds of proposals, but more and more we see the big agencies like National Institute for Health, National Science Foundation, NASA, et cetera, looking for criteria to evaluate proposals on these grounds. So, so we're, yeah, see you. Bueno, dame. Sorry. No, you're fine. There we go. Okay, so as you receive um, the feedback from Gabriella and I, you're gonna see that we've done it across uh, four components. We have a slide for each of those just to kind of show you what the guidelines are that we read the proposals across. And so this is different than that content specific feedback that you're also receiving from your mentors. Um, and so the first, um, area here is presence and integration of multidisciplinary expertise. So we know that you guys come to the table and to your teams with incredible disciplinary expertise, right? So you already have established multidisciplinary teams. Um, and now the, the big next step, right, is integrating across those disciplines to really have interdisciplinary and then integrating with non-academic stakeholders to have transdisciplinary work. And so the big question here is, do these different disciplines that you bring together um, do more than just work in parallel? Are you actually 
um, having the disciplines interact, communicate, and recombine knowledge or frameworks, methodologies, um, so that it's not just five or six disciplines working in parallel with each other to answer a question. And so you'll see our feedback. Um, these are the guiding questions that we used. Is the proposal, especially kind of reading through your introduction, do you clearly describe the inclusion of perspectives in ways that create interesting linkages? Does the proposal articulate these linkages to speak to a gap in current understanding of the given topic or problem? So where is the innovation that you're bringing so many people together, right, to create some kind of innovative new way of understanding this problem or filling a gap? Um, and does the proposal offer evidence of disciplinary problem spaces, as Gabriella was kind of um, saying, where scientists from different disciplines integrate their perspectives and expertise? You all come to the table with your kind of specific understandings and spaces that you've worked in on this problem. So now how are you going to bring that um, together to uh, integrate? Second, we were um, paying attention to the methodology that's in the proposal and looking for some kind of unifying principle, theory, or set of questions that provides coherence across the proposal. Here we were looking for processes for cohering different data in the research. This could be your quantitative, qualitative, or other kinds of modeling approaches to recognize the need for translation where this is necessary. So I can give a little anecdote about the project that Gabriella and I and some of our colleagues worked on where we actually found that sometimes when we were using the same word, we were actually talking about very different things. And this created conflict, um, which we were able to overcome, but could have been conflict that kind of tore our group apart. Um, and for example, when we use the word model, a really simple word, right? Everyone knows the word model. We realized that sitting around the table, all of us were thinking very differently about what a model was. Some of us were thinking about just kind of a conceptual framework. Other people were thinking of a really objective model, like quantitative model that had certain assumptions under it. Um, and so we actually kind of hit a breaking point at one point, just even trying to think about what modeling meant to all of us. And so I think if we hadn't realized that we were using a word, but all thinking about it differently, um, it could have been really bad, but we kind of were able to use that conflict in a productive way to kind of create a better kind of language amongst the team, a common shared understanding. But so you might find that you're using words that actually different people come to the table with different understandings and assumptions about. So we just want to make sure, especially as you're thinking about methodologies, that that's clear to everybody and that there's space for everyone to kind of discuss what might be, you know, problematic to them about something or just make sure that that's clear. Um, and then making sure that these different methods and approaches are recognized in the structure of the research. So in your proposals, even if the discussions you're having at your table, you're like, we're doing this, if we can't read it in the proposal as external reviewers, then that's a problem, right? So this has to be clearly articulated in the proposal, not just clear to the members of your, of your group, because when the external reviewers review these, um, they don't know the history and kind of workings of your group. They just know the proposal you present them. Um, third, we talked yesterday and you guys had really um, great kinds of presentations about all of these skills going with project management, your timeline, your budget. Uh, but here we're really interested in, if we can see that in your proposal, how is this collaboration organized? Um, is your proposal, does it include evidence of the leadership structure? Is that characterized by inclusivity, facilitation, transparency of roles, and equality in terms of voice and status? Okay. Um, are there ways of supporting the social cohesion of collaborators? So do you have activities where you're doing co-learning together or face-to-face -face meetings or how often you are meeting um, as a group to work out and work through any conflicts or issues that arise? Um, are there additional resources in your budget um, and time planned for dialogue, co-learning, and integration? Because as you guys were saying yesterday, we know that this kind of work takes more time, and often that time needs to be reflected and any additional kind of budgetary resources. And fourth and final slide here is looking at your project outcomes, uh, outputs, outcomes, and the broader impacts of your work, right? So beyond the intellectual merit, 
and you guys are here because you want broader impacts of your work. That's why you're interested in doing transdisciplinary work. So um, are the overall goals of the project conducive to generating significant novel investigations that will advance not only science, right, but also policy and on the ground management? Um, and so Gabriella and I and our team have come up with this framework where from our research studying um, 23 previous big IAI teams over the last 10, 15 years, we've noted um, these two different kinds of project outcomes, one being knowledge extension outcomes, and this is the work that you do to communicate and translate your findings into products that are usable for non-scientific groups. So stakeholder workshops, right, white papers, these kinds of things. And this we tend to find being in a lot of proposals and more kind of successful. More difficult is moving towards knowledge application outcomes. And this is where you actually are working to um, translate the findings into actual solutions for ground level kind of problem solving. And this is where most, I think, research we've found in our work doesn't really get all the way there because it is really difficult. But doing this transdisciplinary work and I think working with your stakeholders and policymakers from the outset and the problem framing and then throughout the process helps the actual knowledge that you produce really be applicable, right, and relevant and able to be used on the ground. Okay, because we don't want to do science that then, you know, doesn't match up with what needs to change on the ground. So these are, um, this is how we kind of read through the projects for our feedback um, on interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity, just so when you receive that, it's kind of clear. But we also wanted to give you these guidelines because we're seeing this um, really come up more and more as you go out to get funding to be kind of cognizant um, of how people are going to be reviewing your proposals for these uh, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary features. Okay, that's the end of our slides, and I believe we should have five to ten minutes for questions. Five minutes? Okay. Gabby, do you want to come back to me? But Yes, and I'm so sorry because I don't know everybody's names yet. Oh, she's going to ah. go first. Enough. Okay. Ah, okay. Um, yo tengo dos preguntitas. Um, me gustaría saber en, en general si nos pueden dar al, algunas claves para entender, para asegurarnos nosotros de, de que estamos realmente haciendo un trabajo transdisciplinario desde el punto de vista metodológico. Porque entiendo que el resultado de un trabajo metodológico no es la suma de las partes de los aportes disciplinarios. Um, por lo tanto, no es sumar los métodos de las ciencias sociales más, por ejemplo, los métodos de las ciencias duras. Esa es una pregunta. ¿Cuál es la metodología, que no es la suma de las partes de las metodologías de los diferentes tipos de ciencias que aseguran un trabajo metodológico? ¿Y cómo se incorpora eh, el aporte de los stakeholders que, digamos, exceden el campo científico? Porque imagino, digamos, que una integración subordinada de esa información no asegura tampoco un trabajo transdisciplinario. Entonces, no me queda claro en qué momento del proceso se incorpora no solamente la información que aportan los otros actores no académicos y la metodología a través de la cual se incorpora esa información. También la tercera pregunta, y ya termino, es cómo son las estructuras jerárquicas que se establecen en el marco de un trabajo transdisciplinario, porque Imagino, digamos, que el, 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 el lugar centralizado del, del, del proyecto lo toman los investigadores del campo académico, ¿no? Hay, digamos, hay una estructura de poder que, es, que son los investigadores los que deciden finalmente cómo se integra la información, cuándo y dónde. Pero me gustaría saber, digamos, tener alguna idea más general de, de cómo, digamos, dirigir esos procesos de modo tal de que el resultado final sea algo más que la suma de las partes, no solamente en relación al producto, sino también desde el punto de vista metodológico. Um, well, I think that this brings very interesting conversations about a possible contribution of your work, because this is new. People are trying to guess how we go about doing this. Um, entonces, el, el, o sea, la contribución de su trabajo es en estas conversaciones para el aspecto transdisciplinar. I can provide one example. Our 
our team met and we actually went over a mini seminar on grounded theory, feminist research, um, by progression. progression analysis, all these different ways of looking at the world, like climatology is looking at, like I said, data set, and he's like, numbers. I'm like, no, <laughs> interview data, right? So, um, so, and we came up with an idea of designing an agent-based modeling based on on the ground data, rather than this, all these different criteria that people have already set and they go, like they model the world without actually having a connection with what else we saw as on the ground. Like we have it there, we can incorporate this a layer of complexity. So this is a trans, this, this is a methodological conversation between people who are framed like academically, I guess, like uh, that's the way we see the world. We had a policymaker in our team and he was trying to define concepts based on his experience. And he said, well, I could define uh, outputs as this. This is like based in my experience. And we're like, but there's 20 years of research on that. So these conversations, I guess, can give you ideas of how do you innovate in terms of methodology, methodologies, like academically. And to answer or speak to the question about the stakeholders, I honestly think even academics are behind in ways of collecting data that is meaningful to others than the academic community. So the interviews, the focus groups that we do hasn't been as effective to take us to answering questions that respond to a, a, a very different way of seeing the world, right? Like how local communities, how could you actually meaningfully incorporate that type of data? No, no sé si contesta la pregunta, pero es una posibilidad de contribución y, y si claramente el, el hecho de que ustedes se sienten a platicar sobre las metodologías, cómo ven el mundo, cómo lo entienden, problem spaces, eso es, está investigado mucho en que se sienten y digan esto es lo que yo aportaría, esta es mi... Uh -oh. She cut us off. Yeah. Well, but we, we, yeah, no, it's fine for the webinar, but we can... Okay, wait. Um, Okay, I'm going to let him, but we'll come back and we can talk more just so we can get a couple more voices. Thank you. Yeah, part of the people that are in this room th during this week uh, have been through interdisciplinary training already. And this is, I think this is part of the challenge as well, because we are dealing now with a generation that's been, have been through this, pro through this process already. And even though it's still challenging to put people with interdisciplinary backgrounds on the table and make them discuss about an issue because it, uh, interdisciplinary is not an homogeneous thing. So I think that's important also to acknowledge that from now on because even more having, not um, only in our countries, but all over the world, we're having the interdisciplinary programs putting people uh, uh, with this background on the on to work on, on these issues. So I think that's important somehow to acknowledge that as well and trying to understand, okay, so now that we ha do have this kind of background, how are we going to interact each other? Is that different from the disciplinary backgrounds that you used to have? Because when you talk about natural science or Sci biological science net, uh, so social sciences okay there is there is a ground there's a, a field that we can see very directly but now i think that you're mixing the things up already our in our training process so is is that something that you're seeing as a, as a challenge it's something that's it's changing over the years on the iai uh, people that's coming here to to do this kind of training it's something that you realize already meetings um i mean i i agree that i think our you know the people in this room that are training is probably a lot more interdisciplinary and some of us probably who are from the academic side even probably came you know through discipline you know got phds or got degrees in fields that are somewhat interdisciplinary rather than the kind of very old specific disciplines um so I think that that's true. I can't speak, probably Marcella could, to the PDS, like these trainings over the years, if you're seeing people already coming with more interdisciplinary training um, already. But um, I think even with having the interdisciplinary training, I think when you create the new kind of team, I think there's still, 
I think there's having the training and I think there's doing the interdisciplinary work in practice, which is like another kind of area you have to, like another gap to kind of cover because I think we've all had interdisciplinary training, but still when you sit down to really like write a proposal in this interdisciplinary setting, you see how you have to actually act out all of these different things and it's still, you know, different every time. Does that make sense at all? Um, but I don't know. I'm sure you probably are seeing more people come with interdisciplinary expertise. Yeah, I agree with the comment. I think. Sí. Sí. No, yo creo que sí. O sea, yo creo que hay, hay mucha gente. No, honestamente, creo que es un, un campo que se está investigando. O sea, el Science of Teen Science empezó hace tres años. Y es gente que. Bueno, sí. Y es gente que está este, tratando de contestar estas preguntas y están viendo eh, a, ni, a varios niveles institucionales, por ejemplo. En Canadá tienes Social Science Research Council y National Science, no, Nas, yeah, National Science Research Council. O sea, ¿cómo vas a trabajar interdisciplinariamente cuando estamos te enseñando en instituciones de mi facultad y nunca veo a los de arquitectura? ¿no? Entonces, a, a mí me parece muy interesante que que haya oportunidades de ver nuestro contenido, super así hay muy buena este, propuesta de este tema, pero también que ustedes contribuyan, ¿no? Esta experiencia y quizá un papel de cada grupo es mi papel, no my paper, o my, well, my paper, because I'm academic work, but whatever you choose to, to reach out, the venue that speaks to your passion, go and say, well, this is the experience and this is the challenges, ¿no? Mi institución, ¿no? No, me parece interesante que ahora surja esta discusión porque a raíz de lo que preguntaba Erika, está, al, al parecer estamos sometidos como a, a dos categorías de, de trabajo. Una categoría que es la que miramos aquí en los proyectos que tienen que ver con esa categoría operativa. ¿ya? Cómo nos reunimos para enfrentar un problema y buscar una solución a ello. Pero hay una, una anterior que yo creo que nos va a ayudar un poco más a reflexionar en los equipos, pero también en, en tratar de entender que hay detrás de, de este esfuerzo operativo de tran, transdisciplinario que tiene que ver más que ver con categorías de constructivismo, hermenéutica, es decir, cómo estamos entendiendo el mundo. Y, cómo, y yo creo que ese espacio todavía no se ha dado y yo creo que es como en algunas conversaciones de pasillo tenemos. Es, bueno, yo creo que hay, hace falta que podamos conversar a ese nivel un poco. No solamente el manual, manual cortapalos que decimos nosotros, cómo hacer para ser transdisciplinario, sino conversar un poco más de lo que está detrás, que un poco más profundo que que el paso a paso, ¿no? I have other comment because well, we have different study cases in Colombia and we think that a really big challenge is the inclusion. Inclusion is not integration. Sometimes we talk about integration but in in, in study cases in Colombia and definitely a big big challenge is the inclusion because uh, there are asymmetries uh, power asymmetries that are make difficult to make this inclusion and You can't begin a project with the communities and with other actors uh, talking about transdisciplinarity uh, with these asymmetries. And it's important to create tools to inclusion. I think this is a, a big challenge in, in South America, particularly in Colombia, at least. Uh, inclusion is, a, is one of the most important uh, goals. And, and you want to, to, to begin a, a good transdisciplinary uh, project. Uh, the first step is how you can include In, in, a, in, a, in a place where exclusion is the... <laughs> Well, conflicts that already exist, right? We don't show up to places in a blank slate. So I think you're absolutely right. And then I think when those other stakeholders or people come to the table, how do you facilitate that kind of, so you can actually start a conversation, right, across different groups of people who in a lot of our cases maybe aren't used to having, you know, conversations and dialogue. So that's a whole nother area, and I'm not an expert um, in that, but I think you're absolutely correct that we have to think about inclusion and inclusivity, um, especially working with stakeholders and making stakeholders, I think, 
really being aware too of the power dynamics between academics who come into communities, stakeholders, previous research that's happened and dynamics that have maybe set up, you know, kinds of feelings between researchers who come into communities because yeah. these things can really cause a problem, a project, you know, to fall on its face. And because in the world with local communities, they ask us, who are the stakeholders? Where are the stakeholders? We are the stakeholders as well. Yeah. And <laughs> this is an important thing. This is right. a part of the inclusion. <laughs> Everybody is. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I think this is a key, a key so, thing. So Lily and I, we're going to be working with you during the week, mm -hmm. and and we are interested in these conversations. We had th these conversations, and yeah. So each each team, each of you have your own dynamics, but we will be happy to to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We wanted to kind of just front load what how we've kind of read your proposals. Um, so that when we come to work with the different teams and you receive our feedback, it's kind of more clear, even though there still might be a lot of questions and we're happy to work with the groups on specific, each of your projects are different. Um, but this way you kind of have a sense of where we're coming from when we provide that feedback.